Peace Negotiations, Chapter 4, Part 2. And where have you been? She asked in annoyance. Hasn't anyling ever told you it's not smart to keep a queen waiting? I was hanging out with Luna, and I wasn't aware that you'd be waiting for me. Well, I was. They descended into an awkward silence, just looking at each other for a few moments before Liam's sleep-deprived mind came up with something to say. Not to be rude, but why were you waiting for me? Were you not paying attention last night when Celestia was going on about my public image? Yeah, invading a country will do that to a person. Liam said without thinking, and then there was the glare. Through gritted teeth, she continued. Though I hate to admit it, she was right. If I'm going to be staying here, I will need to improve my standing in the eyes of others. Apparently, you have a good reputation around the castle, so if I stay near you, my image may improve by proxy. So you're just gonna follow me around everywhere I go? Do you have an issue with that? Not particularly, but following me around won't exactly be exciting. That's irrelevant. <laughs> if you say so. Thinking the conversation was over, Liam tried to enter his room. Chrysalis put herself between him and the door before he could reach it. What do you think you're doing? Chrysalis asked. I was planning on going to sleep. The sun just came up and you're going to sleep? <laughs> Foolishness. I was up all night talking to Luna. I don't see how that's my problem. Instead of pushing the issue, the exhausted human moved to the next room over. Seeing what he was doing, Chrysalis placed herself between him and the door for a second time. They did this several more times before Liam sighed. <sighs> I get that you want to follow me around, but can't we start that tomorrow? I'm running on exactly zero sleep here. What, pray tell, am I supposed to do while you sleep, human? The negotiations are finished and my hive won't be here for some time. Have you tried taking up reading? Liam asked almost desperately. Nonsense. He glanced at the room that he had been trying to enter, then at the irritated matriarch before him. He sighed again. <sighs> Fine. He said in defeat, walking back towards the dining hall. He needed more coffee. As he entered the dining hall, Liam's stomach decided that it wanted more than just coffee. He also didn't want to sit down and wait for someone to make food for him, as he was sure that he'd start dozing off if he sat still for any length of time. Instead, he continued through the hall to the side doors of the kitchen. Inside, a small crew of castle staff were doing various tasks related to their work. One of the chefs spotted the human and came over. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, do you have an open stove I could use? The door opened behind Liam as Chrysalis entered the room. The other occupants of the kitchen took notice immediately. They made their way out of the kitchen even quicker. One actually teleported. In mere moments, Liam was once again alone with the Bug Queen. Even in his tired gaze, he managed to find their speed impressive. I'll take that as a yes, he said. And then he looked at Chrysalis. You certainly know how to clear a room. Her eye twitched in annoyance. It seems to be a talent of mine. What are we doing here? I'm hungry, so I'm making something to eat. <laughs> Aren't we all? Chrysalis asked under her breath. Did you say something? Nothing of importance. He just shrugged and began rummaging around for ingredients. It was at that point that he realized that he had no idea how to make coffee from scratch. With no one around to ask, he had the unfortunate thought that he'd have to go without. Maybe he could find something sugary to substitute it. It took a few minutes to find everything that he needed, and one of the chefs was kind enough to already have a pan preheated for him on the stove. Chrysalis watched curiously as Liam began cooking. What? You act like you never seen anyone cook before. Because I haven't seen any Ling cook before. Really? Hm. Guess people are having lots of firsts today. He suppose it wasn't implausible for a queen to have never seen something like cooking. For her, it was probably something that just happened in the background, out of sight and out of mind. They lapsed back into silence for a time. Soon the smell must have reached her, because Chrysalis began to sniff the air. What are you making? She asked, as he flipped the first sandwich onto a plate. Grilled cheese sandwiches. Here. He said, as he slid the plate over to her. She eyed it skeptically. What? Is something wrong with it? I figured you could eat solid food since you ordered meat yesterday. Though I guess you didn't end up eating it. If you don't want it, I'll eat it. The thought of their conversation yesterday sent shivers down Chrysalis' spine. Changelings can eat physical food, it just isn't nourishing for us. Can you still taste things? Yes, we still have a sense of taste. Well, there you go, he said. They're better with tomato soup, but they're still good on their own. He turned and began to prepare one for himself as well. Chrysalis had the sandwich some more. To her, it may be as useless as a starving pony filling their stomach with dirt, but she supposed it would be nice to have a full stomach again. She lifted it in her hooves and took a bite. She'd heard that pony food tasted good from the infiltrators, but she'd never actually tried it before. Even after she'd become an infiltrator herself for the wedding, she was too focused on the objective to try the food. It hadn't mattered to her disguise that she had been eating after she'd brainwashed the prince-to-be, but now, 
She was regretting that she'd missed out for so long. She let out a moan of pleasure, and the sandwich was gone in mere seconds. Liam smirked at the display. That good, huh? Make me another one, Chrysalis commanded. A another one? Did I stutter, human? Liam shrugged and flipped the second sandwich onto her plate, going to make a third one for himself. The second sandwich was gone even quicker than the first. Make another one, she demanded. Liam's brow raised slightly. I'm hungry too, you know. This one's mine. I'll make you another one after that. Are you disobeying your queen? Chrysalis growled. I'm disobeying a queen. I command you to make me another sandwich. And I will be patient. Chrysalis could feel the slight frustration in that last comment, and an idea popped into her head. As Liam flipped the newest sandwich onto his plate, Chrysalis grinned wickedly. Her horn lit up and the sandwich swiftly disappeared into her mouth. She could feel his frustration growing. Another. Chrysalis demanded. Liam gave her a sidelong glance before going back to cooking. Bite me, Queenie. The Queen's grin grew even wider. It seemed that the combination of exhaustion and hunger made the human more confrontational. She could work with that. When she responded, she threw in a sultry voice for the fun of it. That can be arranged. Liam sighed and looked at her. Please stop, he said. I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm really not in the mood to put up with the shit right now. Welcome to the club, Chrysalis thought, though she had no intention of stopping. As the next sandwich hit the plate, her horn lit up, then swiftly went out again as she was swatted on the nose with the spatula Liam had been using. None of that, he chastised. Did you just hit me? Chrysalis reached up and rubbed her now sore muzzle. He had. This creature had just struck her. Yep. The human said unapologetically, and I'll do it again if you don't behave. I am not some child for you to lecture! Liam's blood was simmering. He really was not in the mood for this after being kept awake for so long. And I'm not a servant that you can just order around. Be polite, ask nicely, and wait your turn, or you'll get swatted again. He picked up a sandwich and went to take a bite, special on the other hand, just in case Chrysalis tried anything funny. She bared her sharp teeth and leered at him. He expected her to try and take the food with her magic again, but he was not prepared for her tongue to shoot out of her mouth and wrap the sandwich. His eyes widened in surprise as it was yanked out of his hand and into her waiting mouth. She sat there, pleased with herself. She made sure not to bite down, letting the sandwich sit there in plain view of the human. She could feel the surprise radiating from Liam and soaked it in. The taste of surprise mixed with the taste of grilled cheese in a not-too-pleasant way, but food was food, even if it wasn't much. Her satisfaction only lasted for a few seconds as that surprise started to shift to anger. For some reason, she started to feel like she shouldn't have done that. She'd been trying to get a reaction like this out of him, so why did she feel like she'd made a mistake? Then she remembered the first time that they'd met, the pain of a hardcover book meeting her face. Then there was also their conversation from the day before. This creature had not only admitted to eating other sapient creatures, he'd already rendered her unconscious once. As Liam raised the spatula, Chrysalis swallowed nervously. She'd fucked up. Celestia sat in the dining hall. She'd been there for a few minutes already, and no waiter had come out to take her order. She was starting to get worried that something was wrong when the door to the kitchen violently burst open. Celestia was dumbfounded to see Chrysalis shoot out of the kitchen, a sandwich hanging out of her mouth, with Liam hot on her heels. His long legs letting him keep pace with the changeling, he lifted what looked like a spatula in his hand, and swiftly brought it down onto the queen's backside. She yelped in pain. He brought it up again, but before Liam could hit her, Chrysalis ran out into the hallway and out of Celestia's view. But that didn't stop the next three yelps from reaching her ears, though. Liam stumbled as he headed towards his room for the third time since he'd been awake. Who knew that chasing thieving bug queens through the palace halls could be so tiring? In the end, he'd lost her and he didn't get to eat any of the food that he made. But on the bright side, by the time he'd returned at the dining hall, so had the chefs. He also had enough adrenaline coursing through his system to keep him awake while he waited for them to prepare breakfast for him. He'd even got his coffee. Chrysalis eventually made her way back to him, sand sandwich, and tail tucked. Anytime they'd make eye contact, she would look away. Good, he thought. Maybe that'll teach her to have some manners. She was clearly fuming over what had happened, but said nothing, as she followed him to find something to do. They had come across some maids cleaning more of the spare rooms. All of them seemed nervous about Chrysalis' presence, but they continued their work with Liam's help. While he worked, Chrysalis had hopped onto the bed and settled in for a nap. Liam wasn't having that. If he wasn't allowed to sleep, neither was she. He'd suggested that she help as well, but she said something along the lines of, This is your own work. He promptly reminded her that he still had the spatula from earlier. She didn't have to help, but she wasn't just going to sleep the whole time. The rest of the day had consisted of Liam doing various things around the castle as Chrysalis watched in boredom. Back in the present, Liam was finally approaching his destination. 
As he got closer, a feeling of dread began to overtake him. Heeding his sense of self-preservation, Liam peeked around the corner to find Luna sitting outside of his room once again. His brain promptly said, Fuck that! And he turned to go somewhere where no one would bother him, regardless of the consequences. There was no way in hell he could stand to be awake another 12 hours. A tired smile graced his face as he entered the library. The librarian was nowhere in sight, but he knew that she wouldn't mind him being there. Liam traversed the labyrinth shelves until he came across his favorite reading nook. It wasn't the best place to sleep, but it would have to do. Now this could just be me, but I feel like there's a little bit of sexual tension between Chrysalis and Liam, I'm just saying. Anyways, let's get on to our extraordinary donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Zar630, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, American Lyra, Chris, Michael Delaire Moore, Fierce Pug, Dosbo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe 9852, Madman Stan, Leslie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, Convair, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.